Summer is coming, and after an unseasonably warm winter, the mosquitoes are coming even faster. Over the years, we've seen an increasing number of cases of Triple E, West Nile, and now we have to worry about the Zika virus, too. Just this week, the Centers for Disease Control said, quote, everything we look at with the virus seems to be a bit scarier than we initially thought. Joining me now to talk about that and other safety and security issues is Juliet Kayyem. Juliet's a Homeland Security expert, and she's got a fabulous new book, which is called Security Mom. We'll talk about that in a couple minutes. Thank Julia, you. good to see you. We were totally overwrought in this country, at least in my estimation, about Ebola. Was yeah. it one case or something? One case. Are we wrought enough, if that's a word, about Zika? Probably not. Uh, in fact, we need more funds going to the CDC because we don't have a vaccine yet. So just what Obama wants $2 billion. Yes. They're saying, the Republicans saying it's all politicized. Right. So let's, well, and then they're going to criticize him when it is here. Yeah. But let's just be clear. Zika will be here. There's just no question about it. You can't stop mosquitoes. But the good news is, is that we are a very different country than those in Latin and South America. There's, uh, we have air conditioning. Uh, we, you know, we can get rid of mosquito pools. We live in a different way. Our urban areas are not as dense as they are in Latin and South America. So that's the good news. The bad news is, is now the CDC says, if you are a pregnant woman and get yeah. infected, there is a high likelihood of this uh, you know, deformity, essentially. If you're a pregnant woman, would you go to Brazil for no, the Olympics? I would not. You and would not go. They're, they're recommending that you don't. And they're, in fact, recommending that if your partner goes, that you refrain from unprotected sex for uh, several months, actually. You know, so the CDC woman said what I said a minute ago, the threat is far worse, or whatever I said a minute ago. The problem with people in your profession, or what you did for a living yeah. and do now in the private sector, it's like the boy or girl who cried right. wolf. Right. I mean, so, and you sit home and you say, is this another one of these things where they're trying to scare us far more? So how do you reach that balance? Well, in this instance, right here's what we do know we know how to kill mosquitoes so that's a good mm. thing we know how to stop them from reproducing we also know how to protect individuals who may be at high risk or individuals who are living near areas or any of the number of states where the mosquitoes mm. are likely to come that's the best we can do so it's education it's figuring out if there's a vaccine and it's protecting that particular class of people women pregnant women who will have uh, you know who are at high likelihood of having a horrible thing happen to their child if they if they get get bitten while pregnant. Let's talk about a local boss. Well, yeah. Boston story and its connection elsewhere yeah. in the country. Dan Conley, Suffolk County DA, the other day, I think it was Tuesday, held a press conference saying he's clearing Boston and state cops, right. saying they acted in self-defense when they killed a guy who was pointing a gun at them in Roxbury. At the same time, most community organizations in this town, including organizations of people of color, praised the police department. That's in one pocket. On the other pocket, you have Chicago, where a, a study uh, was released the other day, including with uh, Deval Patrick as advisor, systematic racism in the Chicago police force. We know the killer of Laquan McDonald indicted for murder. What separates the best of police forces from the worst of police so forces? So leadership, and it's not just the police leadership, although that matters, that comes from the city and the state leadership and transparency. You don't create a police department like Chicago in a day. That is decades of systemic racism being allowed to fester including a leadership that either lets it fester or you know completely ignores it or propagates it in some ways here in Boston we look we're not perfect we all know that no police department is perfect but over the decades there has been a commitment by a successive police chiefs and mayors uh, to commit to community policing uh, and to commit to, uh, to to working with different communities uh, and to not tolerating when police step um, over the line so then in an instance like this People are willing to say, okay, well, in this instance, right, we understand why the cops were, were let off. But in Chicago, they feel like they're let off all the time. You know, one of the things that you read about in the Chicago story is the so-called Ferguson yeah. effect, which drives me out of my mind. The notion, the reason murders are up, shootings are up, right. and arrests are down is because the cops feel victimized there, that there's so much scrutiny right. in the wake of Ferguson and Chicago and Baltimore do your job. I mean, right, exactly. So I mean, that's so Ferguson effect is actually a, probably a bit of a fiction because it's not nationwide. What you're seeing in Chicago is a rise in crime uh, and a uh, decrease in arrests yeah, and other things. Significant numbers. Uh, there is strong evidence to suggest the police are just not doing their job. They are being, they are reacting on sort like they're on a strike, um, being permitted to do so and letting violence uh, go throughout their city. Now, if you think that's a long-term strategy to putting the fires out, they're they're wrong. And they and people. And it's it's so objectionable on so many levels because the people, of course, who are dying are from the minority communities. You worked for Barack Obama. His chief yeah. of staff was Rahm Emanuel. He's now the mayor. You yeah. talked about leadership. Can they fix Chicago with Rahm Emanuel as mayor? 
Uh, I, you know, I, I actually don't know. They're going to, you know, the new police chief will help. But the idea that it's, it's simply one police chief, I mean, this is a long-term systemic problem that will take decades to, to get the community invested and, and integrated with the police department. You know you wrote this book, Security Mom, an Unclassified Guide to Protecting Our Homeland. Let's and talk about me. And by the way, it's number one on a number of Amazon. <laughs> yes. It's unbelievable. That so a couple, we're going to apply these lessons to two practical things right. before you go. Should I go to the marathon? Yes. Should I be worried about going to the no, marathon? No, you shouldn't. I mean, for a number of reasons. Look, uh, what I talk about in the book is there's no such thing as perfect security. As I say in the book, um, less bluntly than I'm going to say, you know, stuff happens, right? Mm. And, um, and what we try to do as a security apparatus is minimize the risk and maximize the defenses. At the marathon, there is so much focus right now on ensuring that it's safe and secure that the risk is relatively low and people should enjoy themselves because in some ways that's the most important thing is that we get back to, uh, you know, sort of embracing the Boston spirit. Okay, and finally, the question that is probably most emailed to us every time you're on the radio, on Boston Public Radio, should I buy a gun to defend myself? If I'm not a gun nut, the right. person says, should I buy a gun to defend myself? I don't think so. Um, I recognize that people want to have their own handguns. But if you think a handgun is going to protect you in most of the situations that you might be in, including ISIS, it's absolutely ridiculous. So uh, I am for gun control, you know, assault weapon bans, all those things. But if you do have a handgun, what I tell people is uh, be smart about it. It is a inherently dangerous weapon. You know, have a lockbox. Make sure your children don't know where it is. Make sure you're just a smart adult about it because it is inherently dangerous. But, you know, the fewer guns that are on the streets, the happier someone like me will be. I love the book, by the Thank way. Thank you so much. Thanks for all the help. Security Mom is the name of the book, An Unclassified Guide to Protecting Our Homeland and Your Home.